Yo, what's going on guys? It's No Till Hippie here. I'm bringing you my soil mix here today. First off, you want to start out with your peat moss. This is a uh, 33% peat moss and you want to get this peat moss really really wet when you start out because peat moss is hydrophobic and if you let it dry out in your pot you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time like I have in the past you want to always keep peat moss really really moist that's why we water every two days because it it just won't accept water you got to get in there with your hands and you got to move it around and when we're doing a no-till bed you don't want to be getting in there with your hands that's why it's called no-till because you don't till it at all but at the beginning we want to get in there with our hands break up the water pockets because water will it'll like form little clumps on the top of the soil or the peat moss and it won't soak into it so you want to get in there and break all that up and try to try to move it around and get it as wet as possible once it's ready you should be able to take a ball of the peat moss and it should form a nice ball and then as soon as you take it and you can crack it apart and then it should just crumble in your hands like very easily now let's go and amend the soil or the vermicompost so I use a cup of crab shell meal and we are using two cubic feet so I'm going to use two cups of crab shell meal and then just pour it onto, onto your soil just to get it out of the way this I like to use uh, I like to use some oyster flour it does the same thing as the crab shell meal there's some calcium whatever but crab shell meal has chitin in it so it's it's better to use crab shell meal but I like to keep the diversity up so I just use like a half a cup of this or something like that not very much not very much at all yeah just a half a cup add that into it just to serve some diversity I add I got some eggshells here too that I added to it, but I didn't videotape. This is bentonite clay. It is. It also has calcium in it. Lots and lots of calcium. It also has calcium in it, and we want clay in our soil too. So I like to add, like a cup of, yeah, like a cup of, uh, cup of clay or so per cubic foot or whatever. Not very much. Just, uh, just to get that, get a little bit in there. I'm also gonna add some hydrogen later, just for fun. This is pelletized gypsum. You want to use garden gypsum and not drywall gypsum. For sure. Use a half a cup per cubic foot. I got a cup here. This here is uh, neem seed meal. I like to use neem seed meal. It's really, really strong. I use it per at half a cup per cubic foot. But you can even use a cup per cubic foot. I'm just keeping it down because I'm adding a bunch of things to this. This here is biochar. It's charcoal that has been soaked in some uh, nutrient solution because biochar, it's just, it's charcoal. It's amazing for the environment. This is moringa leaf powder. It is, it has a ton of nutrients in it. So I like to add a little bit of this to my soil. I'm just adding uh, like a quarter of a cup here. Just for the diversity. Everything needs to be diverse. This is kelp meal. I love kelp meal. It grows really, really fast. And it just, there's tons of it. It cleans up the oceans for you. And it's full of trace minerals. I use it at a cup per cubic foot. Or maybe even more sometimes. Who knows? Lots of it is really good. Tons of trace minerals and everything. These are, this is dried horsetail that I dried the last summer. Just wild foraged. Pay respect to the earth when taking. This is some leaf mold compost that I had from a few years ago. And it's just full of hypoapsis miles, or I don't even know what they're called now. But I'd like to add that too. Hemp protein powder. I'm gonna add a lot of hemp, or not a lot, but a bunch of hemp protein powder just because protein is really good for plants. These here are some rock dust. Uh, this here is zeolite. Zeolite is just one of the many, many rock dust out there that you would want to add to your soil. Like I said, I like everything diverse, so I'm gonna add a bunch of different kinds of rock dust to my soil. Not, not the cardboard though. 
Glacial Rock Dust. This year's stuff's really good. It's the stuff I used with my first soil mixes, but I found a bunch of different soil for rock dust now, so I can add a bunch of different kinds. I'm also going to add Boogie Frash. This here is uh, Black Soldier Fly. Like dead black soldier flies and their manure that they have, or their compost. This is basalt rock dust, more rock dust. I like to add a ton of rock dust. You want to add a lot of rock dust. Make sure you wear a mask too while you're doing this because you don't want to breathe this in or you will have respiratory problems for sure. This stuff is very, very deadly if you breathe it in. It's rock dust. But use a lot of it in your soil because rocks, everything is made out of rocks. All the soil is made out of rocks. So rocks, rocks, rocks. I like to use 15 cups per cubic foot. That's lots. Use 10 cups, 5 cups, whatever. Use it. Lots of it. Now you really want to get in there and mix all this up really, 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 really good. Mix it up really good. You want everything spread out perfectly throughout the whole entire soil. You want to make sure you're still wearing your face mask because you do not want to be breathing this stuff in. I don't know why I'm mentioning it so late in my video because it's very, very important. But just keep mixing, keep mixing that rock dust. Uh, it'll make like little balls. So you want to like, it'll, it'll like uh, make little balls and you want to like kind of break it up. But that was just a, a piece of lava rock. Mix it all up. Oh, oh no, I forgot to use my multiplier. Well, I have this fancy grain mill. Actually, it's a coffee grinder, but not even supposed to use it for grains. But still, it works pretty good. You know, it gets clogged sometimes. Like I said, it's not made for grains. But malted barley is amazing. It has tons of enzymes, nutrients in it, lots of everything. I like to use a cup per cubic foot, maybe even a little bit more, you know. Fungi love it. Everybody loves it. It's really good stuff. I uh, add lots of rice hulls too. It's good for aeration for a little bit, but in no-till it breaks down really, really fast. So I'm adding it more for the silica, just like I add the horsetail. Horsetail has lots of silica. Here, I like to add gems into my, all my soil mixes. This is just, this is just part of me. I got quartz, mica, I got jade, I got amethyst, lots of amethyst. And there's some tourmaline. I'm pretty sure I have like Apache tears. There's a few different ones. Now I'm just uh, mixing my vermi compost with my pea moss. You want to amend the vermi compost first and then mix it with your pea moss. You can do it the other way if you want, but I do this. It doesn't use as much nutrients or as many input and it works perfectly for me. I don't, I don't, perfect. Great for a no-till garden. You can start feeding it right away, planting it, not hot at all. It's all good to go. roughly 1% But here I, I kind of messed up. I added the lava rock into the bucket first and I couldn't get my hands under it so it made it even worse. I got way more cuts on my hands. My fingernails got all broken up. Like everything was just cut and scratched all up. Lots of fun for about a week. A week and a half. I'll probably have a lot of uh, little cuts on my fingernails. You know those horrible little ones that you gotta pull off. Anyways, we got everything uh, mixed up here. Let's, uh, thanks for watching, guys. This, this here's my solo mix. Feel free to use it, mix it up all you want. Leave a comment, like the video. Much love, guys. Peace out.